It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Support for this podcast comes from Invent Together. I bet you didn't know that inventing activity by black inventors peaked in 1899, and it has never recovered. Black and Hispanic college graduates patent at half the rate of white college graduates. That's just one of the reasons why you need to know about Invent Together. When our patent system gets more diverse, our nation will get stronger and more successful. Find out how you can help diverse inventors and unleash economic opportunity at inventtogether.org. Touchdown, Los Angeles. You are locked on Rams. Your daily Los Angeles Rams podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Rams Nation, what's happening? What's good? It's your boy Bear Motter from Rams Podcast, but this is Locked On Rams. It's the Wednesday edition of Locked On Rams, and you know what that means. It's crossover edition time. From here on out, every Wednesday moving forward, we're going to have a special guest from the Locked On Network, depending on how our schedule plays out. We'll have that local host on the show, and this week it is Locked On Raiders with your boy Q. So he'll be on the show later to talk, again, some Khalil Mack news, of course. What's going on with this matchup? I want to pick his brain about the John Gruden interview, and we'll get to a few other things, predictions as well for the game. But we got a few other things to get to. We're going to talk Jared Goff had a press conference today talking about his return to Northern California. We'll touch on that. Talk about it being game week and how Sean McVay is getting everyone prepped and ready. We're going to have kind of a short show because as we talk now, I'm still in Chicago. One day left, uh, but it is 12 o'clock at night, and I just had my whole episode freeze and disappear on me. So I'm coming back because I appreciate you guys and I want to give you a full episode as much as I can. I promised you five days of podcasting today and damn it, I'm going to give it to you. Before we get going, I want to talk of course about the things that we have going that are exciting here on the network. If you haven't checked out the Lockdown College Editions yet, go check that out. Alabama, Arkansas, Tennessee, Florida, Kentucky, Oklahoma, Baylor, Penn State, Oregon, BYU, Michigan, Ohio State just released this last week. We're going to keep adding. I've gotten some people reach out about UCLA and USC, so I'm seeing what we got going there, what's in the works for those two. Don't forget, check on the Locked On NFL podcast as well with Matt Williamson. He's got tons of awesome guests throughout the week, experts coming on to break down football every week. So go check that out. Another thing I mentioned yesterday that I want to make sure I add again because we just started it and I'm seeing some really good traction so far with people interacting is we've got a Lockdown Rams Facebook page. Yes, we are no longer ignoring the people on Facebook. Believe me, it's been a while for me to get on there. So we have a Lockdown Rams Facebook page and a Facebook group. Feel free to join both of them. We're going to start a lot of conversations on there throughout the year. Do some fun polls as well. Get your guys' opinions on things. So feel free. Reach out to me on there. I've already had a couple people reach out and say what's up. And glad I joined Facebook. So again, questions, comments, concerns, hit me up there. Locked on Rams on Instagram and Twitter. LA underscore Rambling Bear as well on Twitter. And then the old-fashioned way on the Gmail. Locked on Rams at gmail.com. We've got some really exciting things happening on this show that I'm going to be talking about over the next couple weeks. But today, it's crossover edition with your boy Q, Locked On Raiders. I'm excited about that. We'll we'll get to that in a little bit. But I want to talk about Jared Goff and the return home to Northern California. He's excited. Jared Goff was asked at the press conference about returning home for this opening Monday night football game. He said, it feels like forever ago, and it's kind of ironic to be in the Bay Area Monday night game, getting to go home, but we're excited for the game, excited to go play. Monday night's week one matchup in Oakland will be Jared Goff's second time involved with Monday night football. If you don't remember, back in 2016, Monday night football game against the Niners, he didn't play. The Rams lost. Thanks a lot, Jeff Fisher. Don't worry, we're going to be able to say that for years. But he's going to get another crack at it, this time as a starting quarterback. It's the first of two games on Monday night for the Rams this year. And it's their first matchup back on Monday night football since 2004. Yep, it's been a minute. But you know what? The Rams are back in national media. The Rams are going to meet the Chiefs on Monday night football in Mexico City week 11. Gosh, I hope I can make it to that game. I'm starting to look at some stuff. I'm thinking about going. Guys, feel free to give me crap online and guilt trip me into going. I need, I need someone to twist my arm a little bit, but... I'm figuring out the details. I would love to go to that game in Mexico City. A bunch of fun. We'll see. I'll keep you updated on that. But Goff mentioned he's changed since the two seasons ago. 
and his last prime time experience and definitely how he prepares as a quarterback we talked about it on rams podcast about how jared goff has really studied himself over the past couple years and learning on things that he's done and that he can improve on to get better as a person don't forget side plug rams podcast we're releasing a new episode in a day or two here i just recorded with james today as well so keep an eye out for that it's a longer version but we had a good time talking back and forth had some good laughs so go check that out when rams podcast drops that episode but we talked briefly about this as well remember jared goff grew up in the bay area played college locally there at cal He expects to have several friends and family. I think I saw something that it was like 30 to 40 people that he's bought tickets for. So it's going to be not only a fun game for the Rams facing a Khalil Mackless Oakland Raiders, but also for Jared Goff, kind of a homecoming for him as well. So I'm sure he's super excited to get out there and perform in front of his old time family and friends out there in the Bay Area. Well, like I said, we're going to get this thing moving as I had a full episode that was recorded and deleted. Ugh. I apologize if I say this another 30 times, but I was gutted. But we're back. I'm back at Sam Berggren's house. If you don't know him or remember him, that is the sound of Sam. He was the man, the myth, the legend for Rams Podcast for the longest time. Our sound engineer. My mic doesn't fit his stand, so yes. If you listen a few days ago, I'm being strapped up to a Jim Bean bottle. We're approaching midnight, and I'm still rocking because I love the Rams that much, and I love talking to you guys every day. Remember, the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, quick word from our sponsors. We're going to be back with your boy Q from Lockdown Oakland Raiders talking this week's matchup in the Wednesday crossover edition of Lockdown Rams. All right, Rams Nation, we are back. We're super excited about our next guest. It actually kicks off crossover podcast segment of our Locked On Podcast Network. We're going to bring on the upcoming matchup host of the other show. So this week we have your boy Q, who's representing out for the Oakland Raiders, Locked On Oakland Raiders. Q, what's going on, my man? How you doing today? Man, doing uh, well. Doing well. Getting ready. Excited for this uh, Monday night matchup at the Oakland Coliseum. The Rams high-flying action. A hell of a team going up against the Oakland Raiders. Uh, John Gruden returns to the black hole. Uh, a lot of expectations. Should be interesting. Very fired up for this game. And I, I heard you say Rams Nation, and I'll just tell you, I don't know if there's any such thing. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I got to hold it you down. I, I, got I knew it. coming into this. I knew coming into this. I was going to, you know, try to slide into the beginning and thought maybe I could get away with it. But I heard right. it. That probably, uh, <laughs> that, that's not my scene on Twitter. A lot, of, a lot of Raider Nation basically trying to put that to shame. But you know what? It is loud and proud on Twitter, and I got to represent for the people. But I appreciate you giving me the, give me the crap there and, and kind of, We'll kick right into it because there's a lot of good stuff that has happened. Obviously, we've been had four months leading up to this game, but things got really interesting in the past couple weeks. Obviously, Aaron Donald was signed last minute, and for about a day, he was the highest paid defensive player. And then, you know, you guys go ahead and trade Khalil Mack to the Bears. Uh, you, you get a couple picks back, you give up a second round pick, and the Bears sign him for $90 million guaranteed, 60 when he put his name on the dotted line. Uh, 23.5 average, and I listened to the podcast of that you had with uh, our friend Lauren over at Lockdown Bears, and that was your initial reaction, man. You sound a little bit, got a little bit more energy now. Tell me how you're feeling now about that whole deal and how you look forward after trading Khalil Mack. Well, it was a, it was a major blow. It was. I mean, I was I was devastated. I really was. I woke up on Saturday morning and I was my heart was broken. You know what I mean? And and look, I don't have any kind of relationship with that dude, but uh, he was a hell of a player. He was the Raiders' best player, like I, I mentioned on the podcast, the best player, hands down. And now he's gone. But uh, after a little bit of mourning, after you know opening up, uh, you know for for Raider fans to go ahead and, and vent and, and let their feelings be be told, and I I let my feelings be told. I mean, I'm done with it now. I'm moved on. I now I have to back up all the t- all the players that are wearing the silver and black uniform right now, and the ones that are going to be playing against the Rams on Monday night. I can't dwell on it. I got to move on from it. I know he's a hell of a player, but is he going to guarantee the Raiders are going to get three or four more wins this season? No. Is he going to guarantee the Bears are going to get three or four more wins? No. You know what I mean? So I'm just I'm just moving on. I, I get the money. I get the business side of it. I don't like the way everything shook out. I didn't like the way it played out. But look, there's some dogs on that defense right now for the Raiders. They look like their 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 uh, defense is better now with Paul Gunther in, in, in house. Uh, he's actually a real good coach. You know what I mean? And he's coaching them up to actually play. And if you looked at Cincinnati, 
he hasn't had huge names, but they've been able to play. He's had a couple names, but he hasn't had some big time defensive player of the year type guys. So I'm excited by the fact that Paul Gunther is a real deal defensive coach. And I still believe that the Raiders defense is going to be good. It's just going to be missing a major key. Someone else is going to have to step up and look, this is what they get paid for, right? So yeah, I feel better now. I just still in my mind, I don't like it because I got a home jersey (laughs) and a a away jersey, a Khalil Mack in my closet (laughs) that I can't wear no more. Yeah, no, I feel you there. And you're right. That was a good point you made about the defense coordinator. If you look back at those Bengals teams, there's one thing you can always say about them is they kind of had this nasty streak about them. They played super hard. They always had a great defense. So you got that going for you. I just want, I got a couple little quick follow ups. And really, my, my one is really John Gruden, right? I watched the press conference when he finally fielded questions about what had happened. I'm sure you've given that a listen as well. And. For me, playing in week one, and in my head I go, man, whatever team gets to play then week one, I feel they got a huge advantage because Gruden just looked so almost weak or like it crushed. I know everyone's crushed for letting it go, but you know he kept saying like we got tons of holes on the team, we got to fill them. This is a long term project. He almost sounded like he had won four games this season. This was the end of the season press conference, and he was trying not to get fired after year one. What were your thoughts on that press conference? Did I, did I read that wrong or? Was he just as crushed as you, or how do you move forward? Because he's got to have a different message to the team, right? Yeah, no no doubt. And, you know, he did seem a little bit off, you know, and, and talking about there's a lot of holes to fill, and, and I get it. There are some holes to fill, and that's why he brought in a lot of veterans, and I know everybody's been goofing on him. Oh, the Raiders have the oldest team, but he honestly brought in a ton of competition. There's a lot of young cats on the team, but he brought in a lot of competition to, to be, you know, very competitive at each at each position, you know, and so I, I like that from that aspect. I think there's a lot of leadership on that team, a, a lot of leadership that the team needed because in 2017, they didn't have any. Their leadership was just like out on, I don't know where they were. They were on some some bender or something like they were just doing something out, out of their minds. They were awful in 2017. Nobody had any kind of leadership skills. So uh, I think that he's also kind of playing it up to the media. Like everything is so bad and everything is so, right. Oh no. I mean, cause he knows he's been there, done that. He's a media guy. You know what I mean? He's been there, done that. So he knows how to play it up. Uh, I think that John Gruden is not kind of, he's not showing all his cards right now. He's kind of playing a poker game and we'll see if it works. That's the thing. I mean, you could play poker and you can have a poker fight face and I could tell you that you know I think I'm gonna beat you but if you have a better hand than me guess what's gonna happen I'm gonna lose you know what I mean so right. so he's really got to step up and he's got a lot of work to do and a lot of things to prove you trade the biggest name on your squad in in, in, in Khalil Mack for two first round draft picks that you have no idea who's gonna be eventually that is who you are you're the guy who traded away the best player that the Raiders had since 1998 which is was Charles Woodson I mean, that's the best player the Raiders have had since 1998. I mean, soak that in your, in your brain for a minute. That's ridiculous. But that's what it is. So if this doesn't work and it doesn't succeed, that's on Gruden. So I do believe it's a it's a long-term project. I do believe uh, with him getting that 10-year contract, he feels like he has some leverage. But ultimately, like he said when he took the job and in his opening press conference, I got to win something in Oakland right now. And that's that's what's on him. He needs to make – headway in Oakland right now he needs to go on a deep deep run and if not win it all he needs to get damn close to win it all while he's still in Oakland so he's got a lot of pressure on him yeah and you know if he really wanted to put his footprint on this team he made sure he did that pretty much right out of the gate um a lot of Raider Nation is you know being very critical and I don't blame them I mean a lot of the questions you always hear especially coming from us we dealt with it with Aaron Donald last year and we went the different route of like Okay, let's. What can we do to get him into camp? And I know Gruden kind of mentioned it, like he wasn't reporting. You know, he wanted that money, uh, but trying to really put more pressure on the player to sit out and come join the team and miss football, really playing on that and work it out over the next couple of years. They decided to go after the draft pick. The only other thing that shocked me with the Raiders is you look back at their draft history. It's not like they they can look to that and go, well, we pick we we have really good draft picks. You know, exactly. Car, they did well there, but uh, they've missed a lot. And so it shocks me that they want to go invest in something that they really haven't been great at evaluating in the past. Maybe that's what they're excited about, John Gruden coming in and some of the people he has around them, that they have a better, different approach there. But, um, you know, we'll talk about predictions for the week coming up here. We'll do a little bit with my bookie, uh, one of the sponsors for the show. But um, really, I guess, as you talked about and Gruden talked about, it's other players stepping up. Who are these names that, you know, we've been so – used to just going, that's Max team, right? He's the leader. He's the, he's the guy on there. You mentioned you got a bunch of other dogs. 
who are those dogs that we're going to see on Monday night that are coming and really put pressure on Jared Goff, which you're going to have to do, obviously, with the you know a number one powered offense of last year. Uh, who are those new guys that we don't know about over here in Rams Nation? Well, I'll tell you right now, I'm very excited about P.J. Hall. Uh, that's a guy that I know when the Raiders selected him in the second round, uh, everyone kind of looked and said, who? Who, who the hell is that? That's a dude out of Sam Houston State, and, and me being in Central Texas, uh, I, I was aware of him. You know, I, I knew who he was going into the draft, and I knew he was doing big things at Sam Houston State, but he's a guy that came from a small school, you know, so he's supposed to dominate. Well, he did while he was at school, and he's been looking really, really good so far in the preseason for the Raiders. He had a little peck injury early in the training camp and, and preseason, but when he got in there, man, he, he was looking really, really good. He looks like he could provide a lot of interior push, and then Mo Hurst. Mo Hurst, the fifth round draft pick that could have been a first round draft pick, but he had issues yeah. with his hard heart going into the draft and and people weren't, you know, they just weren't weren't feeling that. And they were like, nah, that's too risky. So it, it went all the way, you know, to the fifth round. The Raiders got him. That was a steal. And so far in the preseason, and look, I like to preface everything with a little asterisk and be like, look, it's the preseason. You can't take too much from it. But those guys have looked like dominant, just animals so far in the preseason. Arden Key, he looked pretty good. He didn't look great, but he didn't look bad. He looked like a guy who could develop into a certain player. So it's these young guys, man. These young guys on that defensive line, I think, look really good. And that is the most... That's the best that the Raiders have looked on the defensive line, at least on the inside, in a long, long time. I know Khalil Mack's been there. I know Bruce Irvin's been there. But they've had nothing in the middle. They had me, you, and someone else in the middle. You know what I'm saying? Like, they had nobody. Right, right. I can't, I can't provide any interior push, but that's what they were asking. You know, they were asking for uh, Mario Edwards Jr. That dude's always injured. I mean, there was just – it was all bad. So, they actually have something going on in that interior line right now, and I think that that's going to play a major role this year. That's why I kind of also hate that Khalil Mack's gone because I feel like he would have had the best season of his career so far with those guys. But obviously that's not what it is, and he's already gone. Yeah, well, you don't have to sell me a Mo Hurst. I'm, I'm a Michigan man, and I love that guy coming out, and I knew that someone was going to get a steal in the draft. And as he kept dropping, I was hoping it was the Rams that were going to slide in there and kind of take a risk uh, pick on him. But he looks like he's starting to turn out for you guys, so I can I can back you up on that one because I watched him tear things up at Michigan. Um, flipping the page onto the other side, maybe let's go into the offense here a little bit. Uh, Carr obviously coming in healthy from all you know signs that we know of. Uh, added Jordy Nelson, Beast Mode, Although we saw just a little bit of him in the preseason, he looked fast, and maybe we didn't see much of that over the past you know year and a half and. Maybe he finally is getting back into being in NFL shape. Talk to me about the offense. Do we expect Jordy to really fill in that number two role? Where are we going as far as taking steps forward? Because obviously the offense wasn't much to brag about last year. But if you look at the pieces with a healthy car, you know, it wasn't too long ago that you guys were stacking up 12 wins or whatever it was and, and you know, being talked about a lot. Why is this offense you know, back or is it not just there yet? No, you know what? I think the offense is going to be led by the run game. I really do. You mentioned Marshawn Lynch and him looking really fast, and we saw that 60-yard run that he had in the first preseason game that got called back because of a you know BS holding penalty, but whatever. Right. I mean, it is what it is. He looks exceptionally fast. He lost some weight, and he also – has been he bought in he bought into what Gruden is selling you know that's the one thing about Chucky I, I'm fired up about him being back as a coach because uh, Jack Del Rio lost his his way with the Raiders and that's why in 2017 they were so bad he thought he arrived because of their success in 2016 and he didn't you know you got to keep grinding that's why you look at the Rams and you got Sean McVay and you got Wade Phillips Wade Phillips knows you got to keep grinding so that's what Chucky is all about he's all about that grind and continue to get better so uh, you know Marshawn Lynch is all bought in. He, uh, he trained extra hard, way harder than he did in 2017 for that season, for pre preparation for that season. And he is a lot faster, you know. And so I think he's going to have an outstanding season. I don't know about Doug Martin, but we'll see. You know, he, he may be a little something. Chucky's been talking really high about him. I, I'm not bought in on him until I see it. Uh, but I do like Jalen Richard. I think that the, the one-two punch of Marshawn Lynch and Jalen Richard are going to be really good. And, and I don't think that Jalen Richard's going to do a whole lot – uh, running the ball, I think he's going to do a lot of little screen catch, you know, screen passes and dump offs out of the backfield. And he's so fast that once he gets it, he's going for tw 10, 12, 15 yards. You know what I mean? Like that's going to be a weapon that Derek Carr is going to use in a major way. Jordy Nelson, I just think he's a good pair of hands. You know what I mean? He's just a really good set of hands. He doesn't have an ego. He just wants to go out there and play. He's going to make sure he makes the catch. The last few years, the Raiders have led the league in drops. 
If it wasn't Amari Cooper one year, it was Michael Crabtree the next year. It just And those were their one-two guys. You can't have that. Jordy Nelson, at the very least, is going to catch the ball. When he catches the ball, then he's going to do what he can do afterwards. And so I think that that's kind of uh, – that, that's a good thing for Derek Carr. He, he's had so many drops and so many good passes, but they've just been dropped. So Jordy Nelson is going to help out in that. Plus, he's a leader. He's going to help out in that, uh, in, that, in that wide receiver room. And, again, that goes back to what I was saying about leadership at every position, competition at every position. He's going to help Amari Cooper have the best season of his career, I, I really do believe. Expect big things out of Coop, uh, but uh, he, he's represented by Joel Siegel. I'm just saying he's going into a contract year, so who knows what's going to happen after that. <laughs> Look out. Look uh, out. Yeah, I'm just saying don't, get, <laughs> don't buy his jersey this year, Raider Nation, because there <laughs> could be a problem. So I'm just throwing it out there. I do think Coop's going to have a huge year, and I think Jordy Nelson's going to really, really help lead that way because of his leadership, his skill, and he just knows how to be a professional. Well, I want to look – Big picture a little bit with you, and then we'll shrink it down. We'll talk about our friends over at my bookie, and then we'll, we'll get out of here. Over under wins, I think I've seen the Raiders at about eight and a half right now. Uh, this this definitely didn't. I think that was post Mac trade, by the way, which I think they they kind of chopped it down a couple there. Uh, what's your expectations for the season? What's a win? What's the loss for the Raiders this year? Well, I'm not even going to like consider Khalil Mack just because he wasn't there all training camp, so I'm just going to leave him out of the equation. Uh, the, team only won, the, the team only won six games in 2017. Uh, at the very least, at the very least, I expect the Raiders to win eight games. At the very least, they need to win eight games. Uh, anything less than that is unacceptable. You go six and ten in, the, uh, in 2018, that's unacceptable. You don't pay John Gruden, and you don't give him a 10-year contract for six wins. You just don't. Hell, I could coach a team to six wins. You know what right, I mean? Like, right. you, you don't do that. So that, that's one thing. And the other thing is I, I got him at, like, 10 wins max, 10 and 6. And that was with Khalil Max. So uh, without him, I'm still going to just go ahead and say 10 just because I think that Paul Gunther is really good. I just kind of think that that's their window. You know what I mean? Six or eight, eight losses is, or eight, eight and eight is, is the, the, the floor. And then, like, 10 and 6 is the ceiling. But I do believe, either way you look at it, they should be competitive and they should be fighting at the end of the season for the title in the AFC West between them and the Chargers. The Chiefs are a dark horse, in my opinion, because you don't know what you're going to get from Patrick Mahomes all season long. But, uh, again, the Chargers and the the Raiders, I believe, are going to be the cream of the crop of the AFC West. And they should be, if everything goes right, at the end of the season competing for the AFC West title. Not saying they're going to win it, but they should be competing for it. Yeah, you guys have a fun division as you look top to bottom there on, on all the storylines and what we've been doing for the past four months, talking about this season being here. So uh, very fun to watch, see what's going to come out of your division, and excited to play you guys week one. What we're going to do now is I want to talk to you guys, um, what we do on the crossover segments. we got my bookie, that's one of our sponsors here. So real quick, guys, go check out mybookie.ag. It's an awesome site. It's not so much who you're putting your bet in, but who you're placing your bet with that counts remember if you use the promo code locked on when signing up they're going to match you dollar for dollar you play you win you get paid believe me i use them uh they pay out really well super fast i had a great time over the college weekend even though some of those games were crazy and i didn't see some of it coming but uh, get on there throw some bets so what i'm doing is i just pulled up my bookie and i want to go back and forth with uq and just ask you a couple of big games over the weekend and we'll finish with Obviously, the Rams and the Raiders. Great opening weekend for the NFL. My bookie has the Bears and Packers game at minus 7.5 for Green Bay. It's in Green Bay. What are your thoughts on that game? What would you take? Well, I, I'm just, I mean, straight up, I, I know that, you know, Mac is a, is a bear now, but I just think that Aaron Rodgers is a dog. You know what I'm saying? Aaron <laughs> Rodgers is a dog. He's got a lot to prove in 2018. He's got a lot of weapons around. I mean, straight up in that game, I think that the, the Packers beat them. I know that the Bears had a top five defense, and now they're, they're uh, you know, adding a, a great defender. But I just think that the Packers are going to beat them, and I don't really even think that game's going to be close. I take the Packers all day. Okay, I like it. I'm actually going to the opposite just to make this fun. I'm in Chicago right now as we record. It's kind of where I'm from. I've been hearing it. I've been inside of, you know, this beast of media that's been going on. I think they're going to be a little jacked up. Opening week, we didn't see a ton from Aaron Rodgers. And to be honest, I'm not sure how much he's really been played. I know the Bears didn't start a lot of their starters uh, game three and four like a lot of people did. But it's plus seven and a half. I'm going to take the points. I think the Bears are going to go hyped up. They may not win this game. But this is an old-school rivalry, which the Bears have really struggled against. I think if Mitch Trubisky really wants to go make a statement and really push this Bears team to 
maybe one of those seasons where no one saw it coming. I think this is a great way to do it. I'll take the points, seven and a half. Bears. I'm with you, though. I think the Packers win the game. Uh, we'll jump over to Monday night. Uh, since it's a game right before me and you get to work our games, we got to watch this crappy game in front of it and on Monday night and just wait for our game. Even though these two teams, it's kind of one of those crazy games where, you know, with uh, Darnold starting for the Jets and obviously with the Lions, you're never, never really sure what you're going to get. They've got the spread at minus six and a half, obviously in favor of the Lions as they're the home team here. What do you, how do you see this game playing out and what, what would you put your money on? Well, I, I, I just think that the Jets are starting a, a rookie in Sam Darnold, and I think he's going to have some growing pains. I like what I've seen so far from him in preseason, but, again, it's it's uh, preseason he's a rookie. You know what I mean? And and uh, you got the Lions, and Matt Patricia comes over from the Patriots. He's going to be the head coach. Uh, he's pretty pretty good when it comes to his defensive mind. He's got some defensive players that I really like and respect. So uh, I don't think that the Jets get close in this one. Uh, they got an uphill battle, but I think that they know that. That's why they're starting the rookie, just letting him go ahead and throw him in the fire, kind of like the Raiders did with Derek Carr and, and uh, you know, uh, what many thought that the Rams should do with Jared Goff, even though it didn't happen that way. But I just think that they're, they're going to let him just learn by, by uh, failure. And I think that uh, Monday night the Jets is going to be a failure against the Lions. I don't, I don't think that game's close either. Uh, he'll he'll probably have a good few moments where you say, okay, I see why he was drafted so high, and I see why they have him starting. But ultimately, man, the Lions and Matt Stafford, they got too much for him, and, and they, they beat them, and it's not even close. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. I'm going to have to jump in and take the minus six and a half for Detroit. I think they're just a more veteran group right there. They, they really haven't had a lot of crazy changing pieces. Obviously, one of the pieces I'm excited is to see what LeGarrette Blunt's going to do if they get down near the red zone. And, you know, he's scored the most touchdowns in the NFL since he came in in the red zone. So just give that man the ball and see him, you know, kind of rack up the points once they get down there, as long as Matt Stafford can take care of the ball. Jets have one of our former players in Tremaine Johnson, who I think got a heck of a payday. Uh, he had a couple great years here in L.A., but then struggled the last couple as far as living up to those numbers that he started early in his career. Uh, we'll see how those defenses match up against each other, but I'm with you. I got the Lions in this one. I'll take minus six and a half. And now the game of the week. The week that what me and you are stoked about since the schedule has come out, knowing that we're on Monday Night Football. We are in Oakland. Chucky is opening it up on Monday Night Football. No longer in the booth. He's on the field now. The Rams are minus four on the road. A lot changed since that match trade. I think we got a couple points here even. Uh, but we're minus four. Walk me through the game. Tell me what you think is going to happen. Give me a score prediction and or, uh, you know, bet here. Wow, that's tough, man. That's tough. I don't know if I want to go ahead and put out my uh, my score prediction already <laughs> early in the week like that. I kind of fair enough, fair enough. You hold on to it if you need. Okay, okay, yeah, I'm gonna hold on to it right now. Uh, what did you say the line was in this game? It was it was minus four. Okay, well let's just put it like this. I think it's gonna get. I think the line's gonna be covered. <laughs> Let's put it like okay. that. I think the line is going to be co covered. I think the game is going to be very competitive, though. I do. I really, really do. Uh, I just, I don't know, man. I have, a, I have a feeling in, in my soul, and, and maybe this kind of gives a, gives away what I'm really thinking. Uh, I have a feeling in my soul that this uh, newfound uh, Rams defense may just be too much for the Oakland Raiders, even though it's going down in Oakland Monday night. Chucky's return. I just think that the Rams may have a little too much for the Raiders, uh, but I don't really want to put out that that uh that score just yet. No worries, you hold on to that. I'll I'll share you my score because I've been basically I've been dying to give this score up. I probably started giving my score about two weeks ago because I've just been so excited about this game and I'm I'm really confident where we're at as a team. You mentioned it, the defense, who I'm so excited to see finally play real football. Uh, we got a little peek at them in the preseason. We haven't seen anything of our offense, so I think we may come out a little slow. But I've got the Rams in this one, 28-9. to nine. What Ooh. I think is going to happen is I think the Raiders are going to make some big plays. They're going to get the crowd into it a little bit, but we are going to be a bend but don't break defense. I really want to see them come out and have this attitude about letting no one in the end zone, even if we're in your house, you're not allowed in the end zone. And I expect that at this point from what we've got in the, the crazy interior defense that we have, the two outside cornerbacks that are just, you know, leading in interceptions and interceptions returned for touchdowns uh, since they've joined the league. So I'm going to be – it is risky. It is, uh, you know, kind of putting out there. But 28-9, to 9, I don't think the Oakland Raiders get in the end zone. Uh, I may be wrong, but that's where I'm standing. So I will take the minus four and hopefully take the bet. But, hey – Q, I had, I had a blast chatting with you. I wish you the best of luck 
rest of the season after this. Guys, we've got another commercial break coming up. Me and Q are going to be back on our shows, respectfully talking a little bit more football. But good luck the rest of the season, my man, and uh, thanks for taking the time. Yeah, no problem. But I'll tell you right now, man, if uh, if you're in Oakland, California, and you're telling me that the Raiders are only going to win nine points, you better run and hide because in Oakland, California, they're going to come looking for you. You're talking about they're only going to get nine points on, on Monday night. That could be a problem, my man. <laughs> All right, well, I'll pop out on Tuesday night after the results <laughs> and, see, and see where I lay. But uh, you're right. I would not go up there and stream that around. I'm glad I live in L.A. I don't have to worry about that mess up there. Uh, they'll, they'll take care of me down in L.A., hopefully. Yeah, no doubt about that, man. Appreciate your time, man. Good, good talking to you, and we'll have to do this again for sure. All right, Rams Nation, we're back. Your host, Bear Motter, the Wednesday edition of Lockdown Rams, a.k.a. the crossover edition. Big thanks to your boy Q. Had a good conversation with him. He was very honest about his Khalil Mack feelings. Guys, if you, if you really want to hear a little extended version on that, go check out our friend Lauren over at Lockdown Bears. He had Q on to talk about uh, the Cleo Mack deal, like the day after it happened. So it was pure raw emotion. It was a great interview. It was some great content. He sounds a lot better, but I'm sure he's going to be bummed next Tuesday when he finds out they're 0-1. The Rams just spanked them in their own home. Sorry, Q, if you're listening, but it's going to happen. But I really appreciate him coming on. So big ups, Q. Thanks for coming on, man, and having the chat. Well, as we talked in the first segment, guys, it is go time for these Rams. No more preseason. No more sitting or resting people. It's time that we see what's happening here with Jared Goff in this offense. We talked earlier from some of the things that came out in the press conference, but another thing I want to mention, he talked about Sean McVay and really understanding being an extension of him and excited for how they can take this new season on. He said, every game you have has a little bit of anxiety and butterflies. You want to get it out of the way, but I think this year, just being in this system another year, kind of understanding what our intent is on each play, what we're trying to get done, trying to accomplish, I think it eases things a little bit. He also went on to kind of talk about how McVay has added some new fun things to the offense, which we had talked about for months. What's this offense going to look like? The big number one complaint for haters and doubters around is, oh, well, everyone's got a year to look at film and they'll figure this guy out. Well, that's what's awesome about an offensive genius is he's not just stopping in motion right there. He's going to continue to build and build and build. So we've got some new offense that we're going to be excited to see McVay with his play calling. And I'm sure he's going to loop in those plays that worked last year. So we're going to see a good mix of some new stuff. Jared Goff, the number one offense out there. They may come out and start a little bit slow. That's probably most of ours concerned about how they come out of the gate. But that's why we have the defense that we went out and you know, recruited and bought in the offseason is to be able to allow the offense to kind of have an off night and still win it for them. You know, McVay talked about those things as well as getting these guys prepared and, you know, this is their plan of, you know, holding guys out and making sure they're healthy, but they got to show up, right? This is going to be Jared Goff's first in-game snap since he threw an incomplete pass to receiver Robert Woods on fourth and six in the final minutes of the Rams' 2007 playoff loss against the Falcons. So although it ended on a bad note, hopefully we come back on a high note on Monday Night Football. McVay went on to say that although they haven't seen any preseason snaps, the Rams have been doing everything they can to prepare them for game-like scenarios, right? They've been uh, having refereed scrimmages and practicing at different times. This whole week they've been practicing in the evening so that they're ready for that late start on Monday night. Again, it's a 10.30 Eastern start. My dad told me the other day that it's going to be 9.30 here in Chicago, but he's like, I'm be proud if I get through the first quarter. I said, don't worry, Dad. I'll text you in the morning. I'll let you know that the Rams went 28-9 to and that we are 1-0 and and are on our way to a championship run. Uh, but we got it starts Monday night, man, so I'm really excited about that. Before we get out of here, the Rams finally locked in that 11th slot on the practice squad. We talked about it. They only had 10 there for a minute. We weren't sure what they were going to do with that. They went ahead and added former Arizona Cardinals offensive lineman Evan Boehm. I'm sure I'm probably saying that wrong, but he's on the practice squad, so I've got some time to figure it out. The Cardinals selected Evan in the fourth round of the 2016 draft. He started one game as a rookie, Week 17, before starting the first five and the last three matchups of 2017. The Rams, remember, received that exemption to place Evan on their practice squad couple other moves to kind of round that out and understand what's going on with the practice squad. The Rams 
also have terminated the contract of defensive end Ryan Davis after reaching an injury settlement. Davis was added to the injury reserve on August 31st alongside fellow defensive back Laguda, who has also agreed to an injury settlement as well. So he's been waived and he is no longer on the roster. Just a few roster moves to close out the show. Guys, don't forget, reach out. Let me know what's up. One last plug. I'm trying to recap everything I did on the first show, but one last plug for the Pick'em League. If you don't know about it, now you know. It's a Rams podcast thing that we're working over here with Locked On Rams, trying to get as many people as possible. Last year, we had like 60, 70 people. We're at like 20 right now. Not good enough. 